Okay, my outstanding friends, you know I always like twofers. Now, what's a twofer? That means when I can show you something and explain it, and you understand what I'm showing you, and I can change what's being said because I will overwhelm it with evidence. And what I'm talking about now, and I don't mean any disrespect to Ken Wheeler at all, Ken Wheeler is a uh, he's an electronic guy you know he does a bunch of stuff i looked at his stuff long ago and i sort of got away from him because he says light is not a particle it's a perturbation or something like that well i can prove right now no question whatsoever what light is and it is a particle and it creates a wave no question about it there's the wave you say well roger where's the particle i say the particle is magnetic and if you look right down here, I, I'm simulating exactly what it is. Right there, they're magnetic particles, they're bar magnets, everything's a dipole. So the light particle coming through here has this surrounding wave around it, but the particle's right here. And it's, it's approaching other particles. Whoops, you can't see that. Can you? It's approaching all those other particles, they're glowing because they're being pushed and, and shoved. Pushing and shoving creates the glow. And here comes the pushing and shoving. You see? It bounces it away because the bumping of the fields. That's what's happening here. If they sit here stagnant, there's no bump, there's no rub, there's no anything. They will try to find where they're not being pushed and shoved. That's how energy leaks out of things and they become cold. Heat is nothing more than excess particles like this and they're pushing and shoving each other around and then sooner or later they just drift out of there to places where they're accepted because there's not as many extra electrons simple as that now so why does this look like a wave and not a particle well let's see it manifest itself whoops again I'm terrible at this why does this look like a wave and not a particle I think I said that let's see how it manifests itself I think I said that now don't forget, before I go there, this is what it was. This is simple as this. It's a construction laser. This is exactly the model. GLM-15. Boom, 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 boom. It's pulsed red laser. Each one of these is, be, is a field being driven by a magnetic particle. It has a field around it. All magnets have fields around them. It's not, there's no mystery here. And it pushes against another one that has a field. And at a certain point, they push against each other. And that's what creates these lines of interference. They bang into each other. These are not going to get bangs quite as hard. This is the one that's really banging because it's got a, a chunk of photon pushing. And you say, oh, Roger, can you show us that chunk of photon? And they say, absolutely, I can. Here's where the photon itself of light, photons are particles, it starts to accelerate. Otherwise, you don't see it. You see up here? There's nothing. You can't see anything because it's not in the path of acceleration, which is the venturi. All of a sudden, it starts to stack up. You see the black and the white? It looks like a little cookie. Now, all of a sudden, it backs up, looking like a little square box. And then, right at the venturi, right here, is where it explodes and divides. And that's when the white separates from the black. I never thought it was possible. And the only reason I can say about all these things is because Rod Warren has spent years doing this research with me. Thank you, Rod, brother. All right, so you saw the actual particle manifesting itself, and this is it. This is literally the particle, only there's two of them back to back. It's just like this. They get side to side like this, and as they come through, whoops, as they come through the air, the one it leads glows up. You see how it's getting bigger? And this is diminishing. When this glows fully, it'll flip like that. They don't tumble this way, they flip. This one will come to the front, this one will go to the back. So it'll be from an upspin to a downspin. I think that's the way they, they think. This is the particle that they found at CERN and Fermilab. They know about it. They call it a fixed particle. And they call these little glowy ones a point particle. Well, these are the muon neutrinos. And these are the electron neutrinos. These are the electrons. We thought they were just electrons. No. 
they have a dark side to all of them. Everything is attached, attached to a dark particle. And they know this at CERN and all of them now. So it's kind of uh, hard for me to believe that they, they refuse to allow this to be seen. This is the point, I mean the fixed particle. If you look up the article um, from Don Link in that Fermi lab, it's called What's the Point? And it talks about this. Is it the dark matter? Basically, it's, it's, it's a dark particle they never saw before because they see them in these collisions, but they're just from debris. So they really don't know anything about them. And they, they see this one here. It can be bigger and it can be smaller. This one never changes size. And that's, I just showed that. He says he can have a, a fuzzy border around it. You see that little green, red border around it? Absolutely it does. You see? It's, it's, it, it is what it is. Now, we did the thing that they wanted to do, but they're using protons. We know what a proton is. It's about a million, well, it's not a million, but it's, a proton is 1835 of my particles. And my particles are these particles, and there's 1835 in the core of one proton. Well, we're not using protons. We're using light. That's light from the laser. Well, how big is light? Light is the smallest part of this. Well, it's not the smallest part. Light is two particles together. That's light right there. It's two particles together. And they spin this way through as they go forward. As I showed you right above, there's the two particles together. One here and one there. The leader, you see it right here? You see it concussing with those light, little white particles? That's why it's glowing. Once it achieves enough energy, it will flip to the back because it's just too much push. That one will go to the front and start absorbing. All right, so this is what we did. We accelerated the light by putting it through the venturi. It's just like, it's, it's just like a fluid. And we, at that point, separated the black from the white. We created the muons and the electron showers. Precisely what CERN and all of the rest of them are. This is, what is their unbelievable end goal. Well, you can't do it using protons. They're smashing these things like here head on. Bam! And they got trash everywhere. So they see them. They no clue where they came from. I just showed you where they came from. And they are particles. And this is the wave that they create. And that particle now is now sucked right out of that wave. And a particle exploded, divided came back together. Fission, fusion. So now, if anybody can say this, light is not a particle, I'll, I'll talk to Ken Wheeler, but, you know, I, I'm perfectly happy doing that. But, you know, it's a particle, brother. That's all I can say. The really cool thing is, and they don't understand this, I don't think. Well, they, they know these things exist. This is not my drawing. This is from CERN or Fermi Lab. I can't, I'm not sure. But this cherry ink off radiation is when high-speed particles called muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos collide into like heavy water and it slows them down and they actually divide. The muons can go on their own and just become muons. They're, they were normally muon neutrinos, which means they're attached to an electron neutrino. The electron neutrino was that white glowy one and that's the one that goes off into showers. And we created that. Now, they, keep, they see these, but they don't know how to create them. We could do this all day long. And here's what we just did. The Venturi's here is extremely finely tuned. So the, only the glowy, this one here, only this one gets through. The black one gets bounced off. And the red one goes right through. You know, the glowy one. Light is particles. And you can separate those two particles. That's the, that's the really cool part about this. Because when you, uh, it's the division of the particles from the black to the white and the re recombining them that creates energy. This is a, it's an astounding amount of energy here. It's a nuclear explosion on the, ta the tabletop. Literally it is. This is the other thing they didn't explain. This I couldn't explain. This is from like 2015, 2014 I think. They injected plasma, which is charged particles, a dust micron size, into a vacuum chamber in outer space in the Russian space station. And it formed this, which is the black holes, 
the black particles form a clump. They don't care about being on top of each other. The white ones hate each other, so they, but they want to be attached to the black. So they push all the black to the middle, and it went just like this. After they put it in, it was all, and then it went, whoo, 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 whoo. and it will settle a crust around here. The crust, though, still wants to get the other white ones away from it. So that's why it won't just be all the white ones come going there, no. These will say, hey, 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 stay back, stay back, stay back, you stay back. So they will create a field around them pushing back. It's always push to shove. That's what a magnetic field is. That's why you see them go, let me show you something when you see this. All right, according to electron flood theory, all matter is constructed of these little tiny bar magnets in the size that is 1835 of these little bitty parts together make up one proton. I mean, this is tiny stuff. And as you build them bigger and bigger, there's still dipoles. Now, what will a dipole do? The glowy part pushes and shoves. The black part just wants to be attached. Now, here's the key. This, I think, could well be Venus or one of the planets, I'm sure. And it appears to be spinning. Maybe it's spinning this way. Maybe it's spinning that way. I don't know. But it's a dipole. And the reason it shows it's a dipole is because of it moving through all of this magnetic influence here. It is pushing and shoving. It's pushing and shoving. It's pushing and shoving. And you see how pushy and shovy it is way down here? And it gets less and less out here. I've been trying to figure that out for a while, but I can tell you, these are the poles. That's a pole and that's a pole. That tells me it's spinning this way, impacting and sending its particles out, coming wrapping around here. Even the tiniest particles do this. This is on a, uh, this is on a galactic scale. Well, it's on a solar scale. I don't know what it is. It's a planet, I'm sure. I would think. Uh, Dylan uh, Carpenter, who is Rod's nephew, went out and took these shots. Absolutely amazing. And he sent me some other ones. Here's another one. Look at this. You see all those fields? Every particle, well, to me, once you get up into the universal astronomical units, these are particles. These are no longer planets and stuff. These are particles. And every particle out there, which is a planet or a sun or whatever it is, is a dipole. It's got a black and a white because it's all moving through a charged pushing and shoving group of electrons. And they, they rotate, they slap, and they bat, but they bat, but they bat, but they bat. That's what happens to these. That's what they do. They roll down the road because they charge and spin, charge and spin, charge and spin. That's what they call a muon wobble. And that's what this is. So it gets real charged in the beginning and it gets much less charged out here. So it's not banging the next guy hard. That's the way I'm taking this right at the moment. There's still some little thinking to do on here. But look at all the stuff Dylan sent me. This is amazing. And this has just got a new phone. He was out checking. Now, I think this is the Pleiades. But I, I really don't know. It looks like that's the moon. And these are whatever they are. Look at that field. Absolutely incredible. And this is at 1020 the same night, apparently. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Look at this one. These, I think these must be stars. And, you know, obviously that appears to be the moon. Now, what he's using for the software in these things, I have no clue. But it's, you know, we don't communicate much. Rod and, and Dylan are not big communicators, but they just... They do the job, <laughs> you know, and I tell you, it's tough to get good help when you don't pay them, <laughs> and they are great. I don't think anybody that's ever worked with me had any idea of making any financial gain from this. Everybody that I've ever worked with, and I mean literally everybody, has only an interest in finding truth, right? That's very, very meaningful. And the things that you see, like this, in space, how can you just, how can you say, this is the dark matter right there, that's the dark matter they've been looking for. It's attached to the white matter. And to be not allowed to speak in these realms, because it disrupts their influence, basically, 
I, I think that's not right. I know I've been ranting. I know I've been, you know, on my rambles again. And I'm going to do this. I'm, what am I going to do? I said, you have to walk away? Oh, that's not my way. <laughs> Another amazing moment in Mother Fossil University. <laughs> I've been looking at this for quite some time. This is supposedly a black hole. Anytime you see glow, that's impact. I don't care what it is impact. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is moving this way. And primarily getting impacted from here. That means this is all filled, the universe is filled with particles. So that's just, but it's moving this way. Maybe a little bit to that way more. And, and probably spinning this way. And this is the trailing off edge, I would say. Spinning this way and moving this way. I'm going to go with that. Right? Because it's going to be the most impact in the front as it hits. Yes. I'm going to go with this is the most impact zone, which means this is coming around, impacting at its most. So it's coming almost straight this way. Then it loses that glow because it's pushed back. And then it sort of trails off. Let's go with that. Now let's see if we can see the magnetic signature. All right. Whenever you see these impact zones, these are magnetic fields. Those are from impacts. And this is this impact zone, and this is the other impact zone. And this is the trailing edge. So it's impacting this way, pushing all these particles out of the way. And they're sweeping around and coming behind it. 